Hi, my name is Rem, and time has come to implement editing feature. In this episode, we'll reuse the same form we used to create new game and make it populate fields with game data if we want to edit a game. So first, let's add two buttons to game card component. So let's open game card component and add another section to the bottom of it. We define div with extra content classes and inside of it UI two buttons and inside of it UI basic button twice. So first button is edit one, so let's add green class to it. And the second one is for deletion and let's add red class to it. For editing we're going to create new route for it. So let's import link from React Router and now let's change this div tag around edit to link tag. And we need to add prop2 to it. That points to game and game ID. Now we need to define this route. So let's open app.js component. And here let's add another match. It uses the same component, but route is different. Game colon underscore ID. This ID parameter will be available to us in game form components props. So let's open game form component then. Now this component take game ID and if it's present, it must make some additional job. First, it must check if game with such ID is present in Redux store and provide it to component. Next, it must pin server to get game details. And if there is no ID provided, it must function as form for a new game as it functioned before. So let's start from get an ID and look for game in Redux store. For that, in connect function, instead of null, we use map state to props function. Let's define it and it takes state and props as arguments. If there is a dparam, we return game that we find in state games. In callback here, we check the game ID must equal to ID provided in params. So otherwise, we just set game to null. Next, we need to populate component state with data. So in state, for each field, we check if game is defined, and if so, set it to appropriate value. Otherwise, we set default empty value. We do it for title and for cover. And also, let's add ID field as well. In case of emptiness, we set it to null, and if ID is null, we need to create record, and if ID is defined, we update record. If we go to browser now and navigate from games page to edit game by clicking on this edit button, it works. We see game details pre-populated in form fields. But if we reload the page, nothing. Why is that? Well, because when we reload page, Redux store is initialized anew and there are no games in it. Let's see it by ourselves in Redux DevTools. Click on State tab and you see that it's empty. So we need to make request to server to fetch game details by ID, or we could fetch all games like we did on a games page. You are the one who must make this choice and it depends on how you communicate with data as we spoke in previous episode. In our case, we'll make request to fetch one specific game by ID. So to our game form component, we add component did mount hook where we dispatch fetch game action. But we do it only when we have ID provided in route. If there is no ID, it means that there is nothing to fetch and we create a new game instead. You can see that our form component becomes quite complex and does a lot of things that has nothing to do with form, like it fetches data for some reason. That's the reason why I prefer to use separate page component that connects to Redux store and handles fetching and mounting and just passes data to form. We'll refactor it in the next episode, but for now, let's continue. Now we need to add fetch game action to connect alongside create game here. And let's import it from actions file. So go to action file and let's add fetch game function to it. It takes ID argument and it just fetches game by ID from API games ID. In then callback, we need to handle two scenarios. First one is if game is already in Redux store, we need to update it. Otherwise, we add game to the collection. But we don't want and actually can't handle it in action, so we'll define another action, let's call it game fetched, and let reducer do the logic. So we dispatch game fetched and pass game to it, and next let's define it. It takes game and returns action with type game fetched, and game itself as payload. And we need to define constant as well, game fetched equals to game fetched. 
Good, so we're making request and then dispatch action, so let's go to reducer to handle it. So first let's import game fetch constant, and next let's define this case. Here, first we search for game in state. We define index constant and use find index on state games to find game by ID. If index is more than negative 1, it means that game was found in array. In this case, iterate through games with map, and for element that has the same ID, we return action game. For all others, we just return item. That's a common pattern for updating objects in array. If no such game was found, we just add it to the bottom of our collection as we did in add game case. Good, now we need to create this route on backend, so let's open server.js file. Let's define new route, get API games ID. Next, we need to find game by ID in database. For that, we use find one methods on games collection and provide query object with underscore ID. And here is the catch. ID that we have in our request is a simple string, but MongoDB works with object ID objects by default. So we need to create such object. And we do it with new mongodb.objectID and provide string ID as argument. Request parameters ID in our case. And if everything is okay, we respond with JSON that contains this game. So let's go to the browser and test it out. Hmm, nothing here. But if we look into Networks tab, you see that we are making requests and receive game details back. Why don't we see anything in the form then? Well, that happens because fetching game details from server is a synchronous action. And when it's done, form component is already happily rendered onto the page. So going back to game form, here you can see that we even run this function after component is already mounted. So if there was no game in Redux store, then the game is null and no info is there to see. We're done. So when data comes back and populates Redux store, as we can see in Redux DevTools, our component doesn't react to it. So what can we do? Well, we can use yet another lifecycle hook method. Component will receive props. It takes next props as an argument. So when it happens, we want to update state with set state. And inside we populate ID, title and cover with newly acquired props. Now if we go to the browser, it works. Okay, that's nice, we populate our form with data, but if we submit it now, it creates new record instead of updating an existing one. And we'll handle game update in the next episode. If you found this video useful, please support my work by liking it, subscribing to this channel, and most importantly, sharing it with your friends and colleagues. Also, join my newsletter if you want to be updated about courses I'm working on, and receive other goodies that I can't deliver via YouTube. Thank you very much for your time, and have a great day.